Hey guys, it's Brian with Team Aquascape and today is a super, super special day. It almost feels like Christmas at the end of January. And for me, it feels like Christmas because I've just got a call from Sean Rosen from Koi Market out of Long Island and our fish have arrived. So Andrew's on his way back from the airport with some of our fish. I'm gonna try to sneak in some lunch, go grab some lunch, get back here before Andrew does so I can unveil those fish for you guys. If you wanna see some cool fish, check this out. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Hey! I got milk. <laughs> I got lunch and an iced tea. But more importantly, Andrew just showed up with new fish. And this time of year to get new fish is the closest thing to spring that we can possibly feel like. Cause look at it. I mean, it's kind of like a typical Chicago winter right now. Things are trying to decide if we should melt. Should we get more snow? What should we do? But when Andrew shows up with boxes of new fish, I get excited. So I can't wait to see what's in the back of that truck. I actually know what's in the back of that truck. There's boxes of fish. More I can't wait to see what Sean Rosen from Koi Market has sent us and check out the awesome fish that we're gonna be selling next year. And maybe I'll keep one or two myself. So it's actually amazing to me that these fish can travel as far as they do. These fish are coming all the way from Japan. From Japan, they went to Long Island. From Long Island, they come to us all shipped in these boxes. And these are some of the highest end fish we can get. Years and years ago, not years ago, two years ago, Chris, myself, the rest of Team Aquascape transferred all of our fish from an outdoor viewing area into what we call kind of the koi house inside over there. So we built this state-of-the-art facility for these fish trying to really improve the koi shopping experience. Improving the koi shopping experience we also improve the quality of our koi. So we have some really really high-end fish and Andrew last year we sold 400 some Japanese koi. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Not to mention all the other goldfish and shabunkins and orfs mm -hmm. and everything else. So we went through almost all of our fish. I think we had 18 of the Japanese koi left over. Right. Yep. So we're slowly bringing in our new fish. We acclimate them, we quarantine them, and we get them ready for you guys. That's boring stuff. Let's go through the fun stuff and actually see what's in these boxes. really change this. I mean, live carp are what they are, but they're really like living pieces of art. And that's what it should say on this box. Not carp, right? They're bougie carp. They're bougie carp. Bougie, bougie. <laughs> bougie. <laughs> Oh yeah, this one's mine. I can tell. You can like if you shake it, you can usually tell what kind of koi is in there. Tell me something like where do you go to get these? I know they go to the airport, but where do you go to like Southwest? Where do you go? So we have to go to we have to go to Southwest Cargo. It's this mystery space on the other end of the airport that you have to go to. And when you just type it in like Southwest Cargo and the uh -huh. GPS and, and that's yeah. where you go? Yeah. Like, that's it's that simple. Yeah, it's like this little hundred by hundred lot and you go in there and is it weird? Like do they know right away what you're coming there to get? No. You have no? to give them this special number and they're like, Oh yeah, we've got this somewhere. And so how and long have these it. how long have these fish been sitting in a box since you got there? Uh, since this morning. So they sh they came this morning. Sean shipped them what yesterday? This morning. Oh, he shipped them this morning. Yeah. They arrived today, so they've not even been in a box 24 hours. No. Wow. <laughs> it's that's, efficient. That's maybe I should say fresh fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get these babies inside and see what we got, huh? <laughs> I feel like an Amazon guy. You guys want to see what we got? Oh my God, Tony! Look at how excited the other fish are. It's like they, it's like they have an idea that they've got like family members coming to hang out with them. Too bad they don't get to see them right away. These guys are actually gonna go over on this side. We keep our larger, higher end fish over here. These are the fish that'll be for sale. In fact, Andrew, do you have a spot picked out for these guys yet? Basically the small ones are gonna go over there and then the bigger ones are gonna go over here. Guys, 
I wanted to show you real quick the new filtration system we have for our water. So in St. Charles, our water is so hard, it's almost toxic for the fish. Like we'd have to be doing water changes every single day for it to be healthy for the fish. It's really annoying. So we got this brand new, super fancy RODI system. So it's reverse osmosis deionized water. And what it does is it goes through all these chambers and it filters out all the hardness, all the sediment, and out of the output, and here in these barrels is almost pure H2O. So maybe a, a couple things. But this will help us take care of the fish and have their health be a lot better because they're in much nicer water. So this will help us with the topping off and replacing all that evaporated water because we don't get rain here. So we got to have that nice water for us. For an example, what I was talking about, you can even see as you're walking around our store in our display ponds, if you look at the edge of the water where it hits the rock, you can actually see the calcium line on the rocks. That's how hard our water is, is it's over time just deposits that mineral on the rocks. And it's a pain to get rid of. We can't even get rid of it without using CLR. And you're not supposed to use CLR because it's bad for the rocks. So there you have it. All right, so I know those fish right there are the ones that Sean sent for Greg and myself. I can kind of see through the bag, but not really. I see exactly what you guys see. Just a bunch of condensation and some fog or something in there. We're gonna save those for the end, but let's start all the way down here and start opening these guys up. I think I actually will feel more comfortable if I remove my jacket. So they've been in this water now for about a half an hour acclimating. Andrew, tell them really quick why it's so important for them to acclimate. So it's really important for the fish to acclimate because the temperature can shock the fish and stress alone can cause the fish to have health problems. So we want to make sure that they slowly acclimate to the right temperatures so that when we open the bag we can just stick the system temperature and it won't shock the fish. I couldn't have said it better myself. Oh yeah, these are some beauts. We got some pihai, I don't know how you pronounce it. Utsuris. These are the orange and black ones in there. It looks like we got some more Goshiki mm -hmm. ones, which are both of our favorites. We really like those ones. They're nice. Yeah, they're really cool. Now here's the other thing you want to do. When you're taking these fish from here into here, I never want to take the bag and just dump it. The reason I don't want to do that is because first, I don't want to mix the water that these guys are in with this water over here. Second and most more important, all these fish have produced some waste and everything else. The ammonia levels in here are going to be really high. I don't want to contaminate our water source here. So we're going to take these fish one by one and bring them in here. Now, the way I like to do it is I almost cover their eyes a little bit, settle them down, and then I can bring them like that. That's a beautiful fish. Andrew, this water's cold. Yeah, it's about 60 These are my favorite. This is a Showa, but it's also a Doitsu. See how it doesn't have scales compared to a fish like this that has the scales. The Doitsu means scaleless, basically. For me, the reason I like it is the colors just pop. Look at the distinct separation from the white to the orange to the black. That is going to be a gorgeous fish when it gets bigger. <laughs> Good, there's one bowl, but some really, really nice high quality fish. Here's another great looking doitsu. Look at how awesome that looks. Not that side as much as this side. That is a pretty fish. Well, I'll let Andrew and the rest of his team finish moving these guys into here. Why don't we go check out another bag? Oh, there's some nice ones in here. Have some more Utsuri. I also see some Jinren in here. This is gonna be a great example of Jinren. So check out this fish. See those sparkly scales? In an outdoor pond, when that sun hits those, it literally looks like diamonds are sparkling on top of that fish. And some of the Jinren can be way more prevalent on a fish than others, but I love how it carries all the way back into the white back in here. Such a pretty fish. Looks like we have some more Utsuris in here, Andrew, so we can maybe do a whole tank of these Utsuris. Sean, you have the best fish. <laughs> Here's the other thing I know about koi. Really the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. When you're picking out a fish, it should speak to you. It's really like picking out an art piece in your home. What I like doesn't necessarily mean it's the same thing that Andrew likes or the same thing that Greg likes or Ed likes or you like for that matter. Pick a fish that speaks to you and that you know is gonna stay in your pond forever because these fish live a long, long time. The oldest recorded is over 260 years old. I've asked some pretty high-end koi breeders, some different veterinarians, koi specialists and stuff 
up and they said on average in a backyard pond to get a koi to live to be 30 to 50 years is actually very very common so don't think of it as just a piece of art think of it as an investment to your pond because not only will it live a very very long time more often than not these guys are going to have babies and those babies are a representation of their parents so put some really high-end fish in your pond and you won't regret it let's move over to another bag and see what's down here here, for example, is a pretty unique looking fish. I would call that a Tancho Sanki. It might be a Showa. You can see some black underneath through there, but I love the orange mark at his head. And then look at the separation from that white to the black. Again, it's a Doitsu without the scales there. When I'm picking fish for my pond, I really look for different varieties because that fish to me now stands out next to the Yutsuri, the Jinrin, so on and so on. I think we've seen enough of what he's brought for everybody else. I think it's time to see what Sean sent me, right? <laughs> All right guys, so I'm really excited. I still can't tell what's in here. I do know they're kind of big and I wasn't expecting a large fish by any means. I can also tell there's a variety of color in here, which really means because I'm here and you're not Greg, I get first choice. I don't know if I care whose company is. Today we're gonna pretend it's uh, Brian Land. <laughs> Oh yeah! Now some of these Andrew said are actually not the gifts, but I think I know which two are. Well, here's what I do know. I already know which fish I want. So let's just pick him out. This fish is so unique. Sean, you are the man. Look at how beautiful that fish is. <laughs> that is a gorgeous fish. Do you know what a fish like that does? That fish actually makes my pond look better. And if that's possible, Sean, you just did it. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. All right, Greg, let's see what Sean picked out for you. Oh yeah, it's definitely this one. Merry Christmas, Greg. <laughs> Actually, that fish is cool. One thing I'd like to, this is not obviously the fish that's going for Greg, but when you're picking out a fish, look at some of the undertone colors in there. When you see some of these undertone colors in there, that black, as he develops, more than likely will pop through the white. And this fish, as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, is gonna look better and better and better. I also know a fish like this, that orange right there will probably grow a little bit bigger. That orange will grow bigger. You see some orange on the front of them, that should get bigger, but all that black, is gonna come out through as that fish develops. This is when you're buying small fish, you actually take a chance because it's a idea that it might, but it's not always guaranteed. That's why smaller fish are so much cheaper than the larger ones, because there's not a guarantee. As the fish gets bigger, it's more than likely to hold its pattern, hold its color that much longer, which is why you pay so much more for fish. In fact, the, the most money I've ever heard of a fish going for was $1.2 million. What? Yes, $1.2 million. And the idea behind that is that fish is gonna produce some really high-end babies. Those high-end babies can go for anywhere from 500 to 1,000 bucks a piece. When a koi lays eggs, they're laying hundreds of thousands of eggs. And if you know what you're doing, it can really become an investment. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed unveiling some of our fish. You get a chance, you're ever in the Chicagoland area. I know some of our viewers live around the corner, live in different parts of Illinois. If you ever get a chance and you're near the St. Charles area, stop on by, check out our facility, get a tour of the building, check out our ponds outside. Even in the winter, it's a cool, cool place to come and visit. Pet the turtles, pet the iguanas, see the snakes, feed all the fish. You'll have fun, I guarantee it. Hey, until next time, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, tell all your friends, tell your neighbor, and we'll keep doing this. Bye.